into small cubes equal ones, say k to the power d small cubes q and k is large compared to my constant small k here. Then the doubling index function h at 1 over kq is larger than the minimum of the doubling index on small cubes times a constant, say, k over 10, small k here. Now let us assume that the, I don't think we need it, let us, let us prove it. I don't think we need any, any assumption on, on this one right, right now. But the conclusion is if the index is large for each small q, then it's really huge for, for the large q. We take this q1 over kq, and we will go from this one to the large cube q, in this way. So I take this small, this q1 over kq, and take the maximal point. It could be inside or outside, but take the maximal point there. I take it there. I look at the doubling constant for this cube. Yes, we will assume that all the doublings are larger than one. Then there is a point around this one where the value is larger than at this maximal point. Because when I double the cube, I get constant larger than one. It means that the maximum of the larger cube is, is big. So I take this cube here, not double it, but multiply it by this constant k small, and I'll find a point where the maximum is larger than before. So we can find, take x0 in 1 over kq such that h of x0 is equal to the maximum of h over this cube. Then we can find point x1 in small cube q multiplied by our constant k such that the value of x1 is at least e to the power this minimum. Sorry? Yes, and we assume that x naught is in q. Small q is the small cube that contains our point x naught where the maximum is obtained. 
So we took a maximum point in this cube and took cube from our partition that contains this point x naught. Then we can find point x1 in this cube where the maximum is at least e to the power n times the maximum that we had before. And we're going to repeat the steps and see how many times we can repeat it. And originally we were in the cube one over k times q. Think about size of side of the q is one, and then side of the q, q is one over k. And each time we go small k over large k steps in the distance. So we can repeat this procedure until we reach the end of our large cube, and we will find point xs, where the value is at least e to the power s n value at this point. And if you think about how many these shells we go in one step, we go not more than k shells, and we have from the middle one to the large one approximately large k. So we can have s that is larger than constant k over k there. And it gives you immediately that the doubling index of the cube one over kq is at least s and this was the minimum. This is a constant k over k minimum of the doubling indices of small cubes. For the moment, there was no assumption of function h whatsoever. h was any nice bounded function. You take the maximums and you go from one scale to another. The only thing that we assumed is that the, the doubling on each cube is larger than one, so that we do our step from maximum point find even larger value. Why can you iterate this uh, procedure? Because now I will end up in a new point x1, say it's over here. I take a small cube x1 that contains this one. It's a new cube. But we assume that for all cubes, we have this property that the doubling index is larger than one, at least n. So from this one, I can still find a point in, in there where the value is even larger. For arbitrary function, it could happen that you go back here. If you have solution of elliptic PD, you have maximal principle. You will assume that you'll go to the boundary. Have and repeat these steps, and you see that you can have many of them, and give you this this constant over the, over here. But for the moment, we use nothing about our function, and we want to talk about solutions of elliptic PDs, and there we have the idea that doubling should be increasing. Function we talked about doubling of on the balls. Now we have doubling on the cubes, but up to con some constants, it's still kind of an increasing function. So true doubling index of a cube 
should look like that. So we have function H, think of it as a solution of elliptic equation now, and define a beautiful N H of Q as supremum over doubling indexes of H. Yeah, let me put large Q here, small Q there, over all Q. So we have a cube. We'll look at all small cubes in our cube Q. If look at the doubling index for this one, and takes a supremum. So I will assume that LH is equal to zero in a large cube there. If you do it for arbitrary function, you can end up with infinity here. But when we're looking at solutions of elliptic PDs, we know that we have traces of montanicity of the doubling, and it tells you that this supremum is finite. Moreover, one can check that for this one, the old doubling index of a cube is larger than constant times this modified index of the cube minus another constant. So if this supremum is large, if you can find a cube inside with a large doubling index, then doubling index for your large cube is also large. There is a control of the usual doublings through this supremum doubling. And this function is nice because this is monotone by the definition. If Q1 is a cube in Q2, there was a question. So if you have two cubes, then by the definition, you have this property that they, they increase. So the question was if I want to put a constant here and say that if Okay, so one more thing that I want to do today is to iterate the observation here. It told you that we have we can find one cube inside where the doubling index is not as large as the global one. And remember, I want to find many cubes where the doubling is not as large as the global one. So we 
Now I'm going to talk about solutions of elliptic PDs, so I assume that, that this is true in a big cube. And we partition Q into b to the power d small equal cubes Q. For each of them, this modified doubling index is bounded by the doubling index of the large cube by this inequality, but we claim that there are many cubes where the doubling index is smaller. So then the number of cubes Q where the doubling is larger than one half of the doubling of the initial one is small. The total number of cubes is b to the power d, and this number is less than b to the power d minus constant. So there exists c and b naught such that, and those constants depend on the ellipticity constant and Lipschitz constant of the equation. If you have this solution of this equation in such cube, and you divide into small cubes with b larger than this number, then the number of cubes with big doubling is small compared to the total number of cubes. Total number is b to the power d, and here we win some, some power. And there is nothing new in this statement except for comparison of this modified doubling and the old one and this lemma. I will not go into technical details, but what you do, roughly speaking, you take your cube Q, you divide it into K to the power D small cubes. Then you know that at least one of them will have usual doubling that is less than the doubling on this scale divided by a constant. So let us skip technicalities and think about the initial doubling as increasing one. So I have a cube Q. I divide this one into k to the power d small squares, and then I have at least one square where the doubling is less than n over 2, and all the other squares where the doubling is still less than or equal to n. And then I repeat this procedure. Take each small cube and divide it further into k to the power d cubes. Here, this one, the doubling there is already less than n over 2. So for each smaller cube, it would still be less than n over 2. For those ones, for each one, I'll get one u cube where the doubling is less than n over 2. So after two steps, if you think a little bit, you'll see that we have k to, to the power d minus 1 squared cubes where the doubling is less than n. And all others, this is k d plus d minus 1, 
where the doublelink is less than or equal to n over 2. Now let us iterate it many times. Then we will get k to the power LD cubes in total, and the number of ones with big doubling will be this one. And in all the rest, we already know the doubling is less than or equal to n over 2. So the number of cubes where the doubling is larger than one half of the initial one is this quantity. So the number of cubes where the doubling. And I think that where I'm cheating, I'm confusing this doubling index with that one. A technical thing that you can work out. This is bounded by kd minus 1 to the power l, where the total number of cube cubes is k to l to the power d. If you denote this by b to the power d, this is b to smaller power. And it gives you this estimate. So this is the basic thing for induction that we will do tomorrow and see how we can use this simple observation to prove the estimate on the size where the solution of elliptic equation is small. I think I have to stop now and thank you for your attention. <laughs>